Hey there guys, my name is Nix and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. I, for some reason, almost said near Automata. And I haven't played that game for fucking ever. But then I realized it's because I loaded the save up and it said Twin Automata. And that's why I was almost confused. <laughs> yeah, anyway, as I said last time, we just decided to ignore Amadeus and head into Twin Automata. Which apparently is its own ending. And then there are two left after this one, then I gotta go back to Vega and Altair and see what the hell Mayuri does to fix my life, because, uh, here's hoping someone can. Anyway, the next day was the last day of the New Year's break. I came to Akihabara for the third day in a row. I wanted to visit Varys' condo and check up on Maho. <clears throat> yeah, it's a sus idea. Yeah. Chigauka. No, that's not right. I'm here to check up on Kiryu Moeka. Maho and Moeka ended up staying together yesterday, without anyone really thinking about it. Moeka would get to interview Maho, and Maho would have would feel better having someone else around. This was probably for the best option. But I knew something about Moeka that no one else did. Kiryu Moeka was a rounder. She didn't know self-defense. She knew how to kill someone if she needed to. But who would she try to kill? In this world line, I wasn't looking for the IBM 5100, nor making a time machine. The rounders were probably ignoring us. <laughs> I know that in my head, but... Even on the last day of vacation, Akihabara was as lively as ever. Hours were shorter than usual, but everywhere from the appliance stores to the maid cafes were still open. In fact, there were lucky bags and special New Year sales that you could get only get today, and some customers had come for those. The sidewalks were filled with girls in dazzling kimonos who had come from the nearby shrine, as well as the usual Akihabara otaku. The place was even more chaotic than usual. Come to think of it, May Queen should still be open too. Faris and Mayori both said they were working there today. Then it's just those two at the condo, huh? And probably Faris's butler. Karoki should be there too, I guess. That's okay. Right? It was hard to imagine Moeka doing anything to Maho, like for example, attacking her. Moeka had no reason to do that. But even if I knew that in my head, it didn't make controlling my emotions any easier. It had bugged me enough last night that I'd barely, barely been able to sleep. If I saw the two of them living together without any kind of problem, maybe I'd feel better. I heard to Faris' condo. You look- I'm gonna say you look different. I can't remember if we actually saw Faris's butler previously. I know we saw her dad very briefly, but you know what? I'm not gonna question it. Welcome, Master Okabe. Kuroki, the butler, welcomed me. He was the ultimate butler who had taken care of Faris after her parents died and left her all alone. He still helped her- he still helped her in her work and was one of the few people that she trusted completely. I'm sorry, sir. The mistress is out at the moment. Oh, yeah. I know. I came to see Hiyajo. The two of them are in the guest room. Please, come in. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything, sir. I don't know these voices I've given this butler, but you know what, whatever, we'll, 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 we'll roll with it. Kuroki spawned around 180 degrees with the same trained and effortless movement as always, and he went to take the shortest path back to his room. Oh god. Oh, Jesus Christ. He must have tripped because he staggered slightly and stopped. My apologies, sir. Are you alright? 
Perhaps I'm tired. How embarrassing. Oh, no. I'll be fine once I get a little rest. Excuse me. His expression didn't change, but the tone of Kuroki's voice was slightly embarrassed as he headed for his room. That's rare. He's usually so robotic. I can't believe I just saw him stagger in front of a guest. He said he was tired. Has something been stressing him out? No, for now, I needed to worry about Maho. Is it Maho that's been stressing him out? Here, Joe. You here? Okabe? Come in. Should I be concerned? Or should I be looking forward to this? It's what is weird. It's one of those things where, like in the last game, it was uh, my area cursor in the shower. It's like, should I be concerned or am I going to get some decent fan service right now? With this game, you never know. What the hell? I was stunned as I came into the room. It was definitely the same guest room I've been in several times before. Probably. But everything about it had changed. First, the bed was gone and it had been replaced by a big desk on a low Japanese table. Maho was sitting at the desk, glaring at a 16-inch laptop as she sipped coffee from a mug. There was a small laptop over the low table, and Moeka was kneeling directly on the carpet in front of it, legs splayed, tapping away at the keyboard. Behind them was a steel bookshelf, and I could see English language journals and fashion magazines sticking out of it. Fashion magazines? It must be a Moeka thing. Until yesterday, this had been a guest room. In less than a day, it had been transformed into Maho and Moeka's workspace. I'm almost done. Can you sit over there? Maho put down the coffee cup without looking away from the screen, which was filled with complicated and constantly changing 3D graphs. <laughs> Moeka tapped at the keys silently, without even bothering to look at me. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Did the world light change again? I quickly covered my mouth with a hand, but the two of them were so engrossed in their work, they didn't respond at all. Yes. And there we go. Once she, once she hit a stopping point, Maho spun round in her chair to face me. Hello, Okabe. She didn't think. She didn't seem to think anything was out of the ordinary. Did you come here to see how I was doing? Hmm, that's nice of you. Yeah. I told you I'd make you come all this way, but I have to do my wake's interview right now. That's fine, but can you explain how this room got wrecked? Wrecked? I think it's quite a nice environment. Wasn't this much of a mess yesterday? Maho seemed confused for a moment, but finally seemed to understand what I was saying. It's dangerous to go walking around. So I have to do my research here, right? So I reorganize things to make it easier to work. Reorganized? This went far beyond what I'd call reorganization. Neither Daru nor I were very good at cleaning, but we weren't this bad! Did you get all this together yourself? That's right. Kiri said you write her article here, so we came up with a list of all the furniture and materials we need. Right? <laughs> Why did you get a desk and bookshelf on such short notice? Faris has many connections, I'm assuming. I can't write articles anywhere, but I'm but, but I'm a bodyguard, so I need to stay by Dr. Hiejo's side. Makes sense, honestly. <laughs> you're so you're so far behind the times, Okabe. You can get almost anything off the net in a day these days. Yeah, thanks, Amazon. I asked Dr. Hiejo what she wanted and ignored it off the net. <laughs> Jealous. <sighs> I was sure. Sure of what? 
No, nothing. I thought the world line had changed and I hadn't realized it. But evidently, I've been worried over nothing. Did you put the desk and bookshelf together on your own? <laughs> Where's the butler? He's really amazing. Oh, so that's why he was tired. That explained a lot, but just hearing all this exhausted me. I found a place to sit down and... Oh. I caught my foot on something. I looked down to see a thick book, its pages open. What's this? Leave that there, because I'm going to read it later. Make sure you don't turn any of the pages. Later? Hmm. Uh, about 19 hours from now. There's a rough estimate. You've got a bookshelf? Why not put it away if you're not reading it? I'm going to start reading it again soon, so it makes no logical sense to put it back on the shelf each time. That's not a very scientific approach. Is that how that works? I looked at the floor and saw four of the books open. I was an all. Carpet with strewn with papers, used cups of instant ramen, bath towels, handkerchiefs, and other crap. Their old clothes were lying about too. I saw a skirt, a t-shirt, a blouse, socks, tights, and other items of clothing. Someone's underwear. I don't know if it's Mo Wakers or Maho's. It's really confusing to have two names to start with M. Yeah, it was a lot like when I visited Moeka's house in the other world line before all of this. Actually, that's to, to be fair. That was when Moeka had let herself go. <laughs> like that that was that was the time where it was like, yeah, FB's done with you and she's just living in in like cesspit while she waits for orders. Evidently, neither Moeka nor Maho were the type to keep things clean. There was enough space around the low table to move, but there was enough junk around where Moeka was sitting that it would be impossible to sit next to her. Can I move anything that's not a book or a paper? Go ahead. Okay. Since they've given their permission, I leaned over to pick up a pink towel. Huh? It wasn't a towel. It was a pink bra. I don't think there's any other accurate way to... Yeah. A brain utterly failed to process this new development and I froze with it in my hands, still holding it high in the air. Oh, that's yours. My bad. Moeka was looking up at me blankly. No! Oh, this is a... Uh, well... Please don't take a picture of that. Ah, I figured. You can't just go touching a girl. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't help it! I screamed and threw the bra away. My wake had glanced downwards. Her cheeks were slightly flushed. Holy shit, is that an emotion for Moeka? I think that's a first! Mark that one up on the board, boys. We'll, we'll count the rest. Her hands quickly moved to cover her chest. I didn't mean anything by it! I tried as best as I could to get it out of my mind, and then found a space in the corner that was still relatively clean and sat down. <laughs> Okabe went and sat in the corner because, you know, he done fucked up. Drinks are self-service. The fridge is over there. There was a round pink fridge in the corner with plastic cups on top. You bought a fridge too? It's so convenient having a fridge at work. We don't have to leave to go get drinks, so the only time we have to leave the room is to go to the bathroom. I don't like that Daru emote. 
Guess this is what happens when you get two people who lack basic survival skills. That's just your subjective opinion. I prefer to think of it as a space maximize for creative output. Huh. Huh. I feel like I've been worried over nothing after all. If nothing else, Moega didn't seem to feel any animosity toward Maho. And Maho seemed to be enjoying the company. The thought of the two of them picking out furniture together honestly seemed kind of cute. I was glad I came to check on things. I'd be able to sleep just fine tonight. With my task completed, I could have just left, but I decided to stay and watch the two of them a while longer. Alright, Kiryu. Ready to start the interview? Okay. Moeka closed the laptop and moved it to the side, then started to go through her bag. So, what exactly are you doing here? An interview. Interview. An interview? We were supposed to do it in the hotel yesterday, actually. The specialist on front lines of artificial intelligence research. I'm supposed to write about Dr. Hijo, what she's done and what she's working on now. I can find all about it from the net, but that doesn't make for a good article, you know? So I thought maybe I could start with a long interview with Dr. Hijo. I didn't expect you to be so serious about your job. I like to write. In the alpha world, I am awake's job is just to cover the hide her workers around her. It's probably the same here. Let's let's not mint words. And even then, she'd been fired for incompetence, as I recalled. But in this world, line, she seemed to be a hard worker. Was she actually working as a rounder? She's done so much for me, so this is the least I can do to help her with the work, yeah, I think. It'd be good for me to, if more people learned about artificial intelligence, too. You ready, Kiryu? Yeah. Moeki nodded and the interview began. Or... Oh, it didn't, actually. Well, this is a problem. I knew Kiryu wasn't the talkative type, but I didn't think it was this bad. I'm sorry. Even I could tell that Moeka was doing a horrible a job. It wasn't even an interview. Instead of asking questions, Moeka just sat there with a memo pad and a ballpoint pen in her hand, completely unmoving. She looked like she was about to cry. Mao and I tried our best to help move things along, but it didn't work. Mm. What should we do? Try again another day? My deadline is... My schedule's... Really tight. I... I see. Then we should finish it today. I don't think you can turn you into an extrovert right away. I'm sorry. Wake her apologize in a soft, thin voice. She still looked like she could cry in frustration at any minute. Oh, no. Don't get the wrong idea. I I'm not blaming you. But that was just the prep work. I'm missing the conditions we need to, exam need to examine in order to solve the problem. The problem? Yes. We want to complete the interview. That's the problem. But so if Kiryu can't do it, we need someone else to do the job. Someone fairly well informed about information science, too. Oh, you want me to interview you? I can do that. But also, someone who can help right now. Oh. oh. The two of them looked at me at the same time. Huh? Do you mean me? 
<laughs> I guess that wasn't a very hard problem. Think you can do it, Okabe? Uh, no, I don't know about this. You're perfect. It's pretty similar to your major, so you can ask solid questions. You've got enough latent talent for Dr. Leskin to fall in love at first sight, after all. Don't flatter me. I'm just your typical Japanese university student. <laughs> I'm joking. But I do think you're perfect for the job. <laughs> worst comes to worst. We got Daru. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> As for me, too. I can pay a little. That one's actually kind of cute. Okay, stop with the spam. An interview, huh? That gave me an opportunity to deserve how they lived. And he also gave me some pay. It wasn't a bad idea. I've been spending enough time at the lab over the holidays that I've been cutting into my work hours. And lately I started to dream about going to Victor Crondria University too. The chance to talk to Maho Kiyosho. A very talented AI engineer was invaluable. A lot of people probably would have paid money for it. I'll do it. I'm interested in your work too. If you want my help, I'll be glad to. Thanks. That's a, that really is a big help. Thank you. Alright, let's start. Kiryu, how are we going to get this down? Uh, record it. Moika took out a voice recorder and put it on the desk. Hmm. I can take the lead, right? Yes. Talk freely. I'll edit it later. What should I ask? Just so we're clear, I don't know I don't know much more about AI than your average Japanese person. Hmm. I can just talk about whatever occurs to me, but why don't we make it a discussion format? That would be more interesting, I'm sure. The second she said those words, my mind filled with memories of the past. Um, well, sure. Her discussion format would make things more interesting. Okabe? What's wrong? You okay? Huh? huh? Both Maho and Moeka were staring at me confused. If you don't want to do it that way. Uh, no. No, it's just fine. Sorry. I just remember when Kurisu said the same thing as you. Kurisu did? When? When she came to Japan, she gave a speech at the ATF on the time machine. No, she didn't. That happened in another world line. In this world line, Kurosu died before she ever gave that lecture on the time machine, or came to the lab. No. I must be mistaken. Sorry for getting things off track. Don't worry about me. Yeah? That's okay, I guess. So, where do we begin? Let me see. Researching to artificial intelligence began almost the same time computers were born. 
The core of the AI we're creating is based off what's called a neural network technology. Oh, like the wires? <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching Serial Experiments Lane recently and, uh... Can't help but draw some parallels between it, this, and the Matrix. All I'm saying is that those two probably inspired this. It's all I'm saying. This technology was first proposed in the 1950s. Enoch? 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 E-N-I-A-C. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to call it ENIAC. ENIAC. ENIAC, the world's first von Neumann architecture-based computer, was announced to the world in 1946. So basically the same time, right? At the same time, computers were made basically magic. Once the program was done, it would have automatically solve any problem for you, no matter how complicated. Well, that's still true today. So scientists at the time decided that they, if they wrote a program that was even more amazing, it could solve even more problems. But they felt that the ultimate evolution of the computer would be the one that could think and learn like a human. But unfortunately, they were unsuccessful. Even now, in the 21st century, we've been unsuccessful in creating an AI with general purpose intelligence like a human. But of course, it's not like we've been sitting on a, on a button doing nothing. It's the exact opposite. We failed to create the ultimate artificial intelligence, but we succeeded in bringing all kinds of benefits to the field of information science. For example, OCR technology, which scans an image and reads the letters on it, is similar to the methods that humans use to recognize letters. Is that work in Japanese or English or any language it's given? Probably all of them. Also, I had slight flashbacks because here in the UK, OCR is an exam board. So, just maybe remember high school. Don't want to do that again for a while. I've heard some rumors that before long, smartphones are going to have voice recognition built into them. I mean, mine looks at my face, so I guess. I was also a field of study in AI research. But even 60 years after the field got its start, no one succeeded in creating an artificial intelligence that has the comprehensive capabilities of a human. Except for Amadeus, of course. Why did no one succeed? Hmm. I suppose the simplest way to say would be the simplest way to say it would be we don't know how the brain works. Maho tapped her temple with her index finger. There's still a lot we don't know about our brain. How can a biocomputer made of just a hundred billion neurons possess such power? Oh, oh, when you phrase it as a hundred billion neurons, it sounds like an awful lot to me. Even if it is just a grey squishy thing in between my ears. How is it capable of recording and instantly accessing such a huge volume of information? <laughs> she asks, knowing full well that I can do something and then forget it about ten minutes later. Why is it capable of things like insight, where two seemingly unconnected events are put together? I could come up with all sorts of examples. There are a lot of problems that humans can solve easily, but that computers can't solve at all. There are? Plenty. You can see our job is going through each one and solving it in a turn. I think I'm having a little trouble seeing what you're getting at. Can you give me a concrete example? Hmm. Maybe I'll tell you about the frame problem. Let's say Kiryu was a robot. Moika had been taking notes, but she suddenly jerked up when she heard her name. I'm a robot? 
More accurate. More accurately, the AI loaded into a robot. Kiryu, I'd like to use that table. Can you move the voice recorder a little? Moeka moved the voice recorder from the table to the floor. Maho started to rummage through her bag as she did so. Hmm. I'm sure it's in here. Oh, here we go. She took out a small white box, small enough to fit inside her tiny hands. She opened it today and extracted the contents. It was an Upa, the same thing Mayuri collected. Maho handed it to me, so I took it and touched it. It had the texture of an eraser. Mayuri gave this to me yesterday. Cute, huh? Was it really? I never quite understood what girls, particularly Mayuri, would find cute. I returned the Upa to her. She put it back in the box, closed the lid, and put the box in the center of the table. I'm going to do a simple experiment right now. Okabe, order Kiryu to take the Upa out of the box. Order her? That's right. She's an AI, so just send her a program so that she'll perform the right movements. The right movements? They should be simple and as specific as possible. For example, there are a lot of boxes in this room. But you need to tell her to open the one on the table and not any of the other boxes. You only get to send words. No pointing in saying this box. Kiryu, do exactly what Okabe orders you to. Do any what he says as faithfully as possible. Got it? Okay. Let's start the experiment. Okabe, go ahead and give your orders. I didn't quite get the point of this, but I decided to just say the first thing that came into my mind. Open the pure white box on the table and take out the contents. Kiryu, that's your order. Open the pure white box on the table and take out the contents. Do as you were told, as faithfully as possible. Moika's gaze moved from me to the box on the table. I can't. Huh? You just have to open the box, right? I pointed to the box in the center of the table, uncertain as to what was going on. Moeka just looked back at me, clearly upset. Maho nodded, satisfied. She can't help it. Look. Maho picked up the box and showed me the other side. What is this? I'm glad she said it in German because I'm probably going to butcher it. Der alte... Der alte Wolferto Nichto. Nichto? God does not play dice. Something Einstein said. You can open the box because of this, right? That's right. Huh? It is. Why? What about those words? I mean, you couldn't follow the instructions. I'm guess because you said the pure white box and it wasn't... I don't know. It wasn't pure white. Huh? Kiryu-san. Kiryu, you're exactly correct. Okabe's orders were to open the pure white box and take out the contents, right? But this box isn't pure white. It's got something written on it. That's why she wasn't able to open it. Computers aren't like humans. They're only capable of doing exactly what they're told. So you need to be extremely careful with how you order them. 
Maho put the b box back on the table. I couldn't see the, what the letters from where I was. Shall we try it again? Okabe, try to come up with some, appropri some appropriate orders based on what you just learned. I see. In other words, the problem was that I said pure white when I shouldn't have, right? That's right. So I should try making it simpler. Open the box on the table and take out the contents. Kiryu, to, to, uh, what Okabe ordered you to? Exactly what he said, nothing more, nothing less. Moika turned her gaze once again from me to the box on the table. I can't do it. Now what's the problem? Moika's brow wrinkled a little as she pointed to the box on the table. This... This isn't... a box. Huh? <laughs> God damn it, Maho. Maho burst out laughing as if she couldn't contain herself any longer. Her smile seemed more childlike than ever. Wonderful test subject. I didn't think it would go this well. I had no idea what was going on. What do you mean? I'm guessing the one, the others. Maho turned the box around and explained the trick to me. This is not a box. You wrote something on it? These words mean that Kiryu couldn't tell for sure, for sure it was a box or not, so she couldn't open it, right? That's right. No, 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 no. Oh, piss, I didn't, I skipped past that one. Where is my backlog? Here we are. It doesn't matter what it says, a box is a box. Right? NAI doesn't know that. You need to tell it exactly what a box is. For this experiment, we assume that Robo Kiryu had a basic idea of what a box was. But as you've just seen, just the information they received even a little, and NAI won't do what you wanted to. Also, there's, the, there's only this one box on the table. And if there was a square stone that looked just like a box, you'd need to walk there to differentiate the two. Man, computers are fucking dumb sometimes, aren't they? If the stone was on top of the box, you'd first need to give it an order to move it, too. So you need to remove each possibility, one by one. You'd never be done. Right? Yep. Never. You don't know what conditions can affect the AI's judgment, so you need to include every possibility you can think of. Kiryu, what did you have for breakfast today? For breakfast today? What was this about? A jam bomb? Did you have any choices besides jam buns for breakfast? A meat bun? If you'd chosen the meat bun, your actions might have changed. You need to take that into account, too. Also, hmm, there's the weather as well. It's clear out today, but if it was raining, you might have to take that into account. There's also the temperature and the humidity of the room. Although the table's important as well. You also need to measure its height from the floor and know what kind of material it's made out of. That curtain's open, but what if it's closed? You also need to test cases where it was half open and 75% open individually as well. The cleanliness of the curtain might play into factor too. 
When the last, what was the last time it was cleaned? You also need to consider how much you paid, and the cleaner's attitude, and those parameters. And... Stop! 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 I had to stop her before she went any further. There's no way this morning's breakfast could influence whether or not she picks the box off the table. Let alone how to clean the curtain is. So, couldn't you just take them off the list? Maho's eyes began to shine. That's it. That's exactly right. Huh? You're exactly right, Okabe. Breakfast and the weather have nothing to do with opening a box. Then... But how did you know that? Huh? Well, I mean, normally. And then finally, I understood the point of this experiment. Maho nodded, satisfied. That's right. May I doesn't know what normal is. I see. That's the frame problem. And now I need to consider an endless number of attached conditions to know how to execute an order. The vast majority of those conditions can probably be ignored, but the AI doesn't know which to ignore. Which means it has to consider everything. But everything's an infinite set, isn't it? It has to examine an infinite number of conditions, it will never be able to pick up the box. A human knows without having to think that breakfast and the table of color has nothing to do with opening a box. But an AI doesn't. A human can easily frame, frame which conditions need to be accounted for, but an AI can't. So, that's the frame problem. I see. Interesting. Isn't it? But, why are humans able to create a frame? I have no idea. It's been one of the mysteries of AFE AI field for 60 years. One of the goals of the Amadeus Project is trying to solve the frame problem. When you look at Kursu, it may feel she's solved it. But we don't know how. In fact, neither does she. You don't know? Didn't you make Amadeus? I can give you a dozen hypotheses if you want them. But if we've got no mathematical proof. And anyway, what I made was the mechanism for extracting and digitizing human memories. And then the AI that executed them like a human brain. It's a total simulation of the brain, but that doesn't mean we know how everything works. In order that you create an object with the same mass as the Earth, it'll have a gravity equal to 1g. But that doesn't mean we know how gravity works. Is that easier to understand? Not a lot easier, but I see what you're getting at. You created an AI that works like a human brain. But how it works like a human, you don't know. That's right. That's still a huge event in AI research. Research to stimulate the function of a neuron has been going on in a long time. But we never found a way to create data that could, be, that could function effectively. That data is a complicated, intertwined web of everything that humans need, categorized and stored into their brains for decades. In other words, memories. Exactly. The structure of memories has been a mystery for a long time. But thanks to Kurosu's research, we were able to extract an entire set of memories and digitize them. 
We still will now have the data itself installed, but we know how to use it now. And that's Amadeus. Yep, that's right. This happens a lot in AI research. But someday I'm going to find out what human intelligence really is. Then Carissa will finally... Maho suddenly fell silent in the middle of her sentence. What's wrong? Nothing. Is there anything else you want to know? It doesn't have to be about the frame problem. There was a lot I wanted to ask, but I felt we had more than enough for Moeka's article. I looked at Moeka, who hesitated a second before speaking. Um, what is it, Kiryu? Is it possible for artificial intelligence to surpass human capabilities? That's an interesting question. In terms of knowledge, Amadeus probably surpasses anyone in this room. She has Kurisu's memories, after all. There was no matching the knowledge of a genius. I had gone up against Kurisu any number of times and learned that the hard way. But that's just comparing her to us. The memories of Kurisu come from Kurisu herself. In other words, they're human memories. The problem you need to think about whether this can truly be considered surpassing a human's capabilities. But it won't be long before, we get a, before we've got an AI that does more than a human can, I think. Scientists have been studying for a while. So, scientists have been saying for a while that by 2050, AIs will surpass humanity. They call it the singularity point, you see. Amadeus' arrival should bring that day much, much closer than we anticipated. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> a machine that's better than a human, hmm? Seems like something out of a movie. Is that even possible? Huh? It's hard to believe I'm hearing that from an engineering student. You can't fly like an airplane, can you? And you can't run faster than a bullet train, nor do math faster than a cheaper calculator. Even right now, the abilities of a machine far exceed those of a human. Nobody can say the brain will be the only exception. There is no miraculous mechanism in this world that science can't explain. It's all physical phenomena, you see. But you know the underlying principles, you can recreate it artificially. My job is to solve the riddles we don't have answers to and make the true AI. How does that work for an interview, Kiryu? But Moeka just stared at her memo pad and didn't look up. Kiryu? Yes. This is plenty. But I'm sure it will be an interesting article. Thank you too, Okabe. Yeah, it was really interesting. I wanted to talk a little more, but both Maho and Moeka seemed to have work to do, so I decided to leave. It's all physical phenomena, huh? Maho thought exactly the way most AI researchers did. And that there were no black boxes in the human brain. But I knew the truth. There were things that, things inside the brain that science couldn't explain. <laughs> Just what the hell is reading Steiner anyway? Was it ever going to be scientifically explained? Mm. 
Ah, oh, well, oops. Mo quickly chokes back her yawn, then looked around to see if anyone saw her. There were other people doing the same thing as she was, leaning up against the railing of a bridge and killing time. Of course, they were all too focused on themselves to pay her any mind. She planned on spending the day at Ferris's house, taking care of the paperwork left over from the officer's temporary closure. But this morning, she got on the call from Dr. Leskinen that had sent her hurrying to Tokyo Denki University. He'd found the Japanese shaman girls he'd been looking for this whole time. Tokyo Denki had, it seemed, offered them a temporary room at the school while their office was closed. Dr. Leskinen had called Dr. Izaki at Tokyo Denki, who had given them, a, them a, given it to them without a second thought. So now she decided to pay a new the the the, 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 the new office. <laughs> She decided to pay the new officer visit and, and discuss what they plan to do for the future. The Kanda campus for Tokyo Denki University wasn't far away from Akihabara, it seemed. Sure is a nice day out, though. The sky that poked out between the buildings had the clear colour that was unique to winter. He spent the whole of yesterday cooped up inside a room, so the cold there felt good. She crossed her arms and reached upward. <sighs> she sure is late, though. The reason she was standing here was that she was waiting for Moeka. Oh, oh, but there she is. She's almost there. No time, take. No hurry, take your time. <laughs> she didn't have to come all this way. Oh, didn't know the way to Tokyo Denki, so Moeka had kindly offered to take her there. And she'd asked for something in exchange. I want to take a picture of you, Dr. Hiyajo. I want to put it in the article. Oh, didn't really like having a picture taken, but if Moeka was nice enough to interview her, she wanted to do everything she could to help. Moeka had gone back to her home to get her camera. She said it was close enough to walk, so Maho decided to just wait. She's always so excited on Ryan, though. That's just how she is. She closed her phone and looked up. And then she saw Moeka directly under the bridge, running toward her. Sorry to keep you waiting. Dr. Hiyajo. You didn't need to hurry so much. You want to take a break? No. I'm fine. You know, when I started this, I didn't think that this would be the pairing that I would end up seeing a lot of. But I'm surprised how well they get on. Moeko went around in front of Maho and started to walk ahead. The year we just started and the subway was empty. Except for all the chaos child ads that are on the freaking thing. Moeka decided to take a closer look at Moeka, who was standing next to her and grabbing onto one of the handles. Mm. Moeka realized she was being watched and tilted her head. Then she took out her phone and started to type. Mm -hmm. Maho's phone rang, suddenly rang from the bottom of her bag. She just received a Ryan message. What's up? I see. So we can talk like this on the train. It feels strange talking to you on Ryan when we're right next to each other. You didn't look like you were doing well. It may have just been my imagination. Moeka's expression didn't change more, but Maho thought that it didn't mean she had no feelings. 
When she looked at, into Moeka's thin, pretty eyes, she could see that she was interested. She was an interested observer of many things. Maybe that's what you would expect from a writer. Sorry to worry you. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll make sure you get the do thank you, you, Dr. Hirjo. <laughs> it's weird being called Dr. Hirjo. It's weird? Yep. You don't have to call me doctor both in real world and on Rhine. Well, let's be a little more informal. But, and what can I call you? Just call me by my name. That's what you do for a cop, right? That's because he's a young. That's because he's a student and younger than me. You can treat me the same way. We'll be roommates for a while, and we're both about the same age. So how about we call each other Moeka and Maho? We never tell just by looking at them, but Maho and Moeka are only a year apart. And Maho was 21 and Moeka was 20, which means that she was the older of the two. Maho could help but wonder what kind of deal you had to make with God to get that height and those voluptuous breasts. <laughs> Look, Maho, you're fine. Uh, no way. I've never called anyone by their first name. I'd be too nervous. Hmm. Then how about Kiryu and Hirjo? Please be one of the few friends I've got in Japan. Got it. Will do. Okay. Then try saying it now. <laughs> Moeka suddenly jerked upright and opened her eyes wide. Maho nodded at Moeka's whispered question. If we're doing it, I want to start now. But... Jesus Christ, Kiryu, I can't read that quickly. Like I just said, I'm really not good at talking to people. Real? Really? I just thought you were nervous because Okabe was with us last night. Like, you're the kind of person who gets nervous around the opposite sex. Hmm. It's true that I get a little... when I talk to men, I get even more nervous. In other words, when it's just girl, it's not so bad. It's not so bad that you can't talk? Well, maybe. And since we're both girls, let's get along. I know. How about this? When it's just the two of us, how about we try... We try to talk in person instead of on Ryan as much as we can. I'd be less bold with someone to talk to. If you're going to be writing for a magazine, I think it'd be a good chance to practice, don't you? Um... Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> Moeka seemed to steal herself, and then turned towards Maho. The train arrive at their station. The area around Tokyo Denki was quiet. Moika told her that the surrounding areas were, were offices and government buildings, which meant at this time of year there was almost no one around. She felt bad, but decided to have Moika wait outside. The school was still on break, so she could have waited in one of the rooms on campus, but Moeka had refused. Okay, I'll call you when I get out. She split up with Moeka. Maho got very lost on her way to the Izaki's lab. The school was completely empty because of the break and she couldn't ask anyone. In the end, she had to call Dr. Leskin in and get detailed instructions. 
A letter was taped to the door marked Dr. Izaki's lab. The letter had a photo of a smiling Dr. Leska along with some low resolution text that looked like it was directly printed from a PC screen. For immediate release, Global Brain Science Comprehensive Research Organization, Japanese Office Prep Room. The founder of this establishment, Alexis Leskinen, has a request. If anyone who saw this donated $1, I can eat a can of Odin right now. I love this stuff so much. No matter how formal the setting, when the professor wanted to tell a joke, he'd do it. He really was just like a child. But his carefree personality let Maho and Kurisu relax and enjoy the work. <laughs> Suddenly remembering Kurisu made her heart ache a little. She suddenly realized that her sudden change of address, coupled with a person she barely even met, was taking its toll on her. Today, she'd finally get the chance to talk to her again. Or, oh, more accurately, more accurately, the memory she'd left behind. <laughs> Professor? <laughs> Dr. Leskinen? When she stepped inside the lab and called the professor's name, the giants in the back came running to greet her. Hey, Maho! Thanks for coming! Welcome to our Powered Up Prep Room! Huh. So this table and two sofas are our Powered Up Prep Room, huh? Yeah! They say simplicity is the secret to truth, do they not? Who says that? I do! <laughs> The professor clapped his hands and laughed. Maho ignored him and went to sit on the sofa. He didn't seem hurt. Now then, about our future plans. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to put up Amadeus. Just give me a second. She took out her laptop and put it on the table. Her OS, a Linux. I'm more surprised that she uses Linux more than anything else. A Linux variant, customized for research purposes, booted up and displayed the login screen. Maho typed in her account name the same way she'd done a thousand times before. Salieri. For just a moment, she said the letters in her account name. She quickly put in the password and called up to the desktop. And before long, Carissa would appear on the screen. It's been a long time, Maho. A long time? We only just talked two days ago. That was an emergency. It didn't count. And besides that, we haven't gotten to talk much lately. It's not my fault, we were testing. During Okabe and Kurusu's communication test, Maho and Dr. Leskinen had avoided talking to Amadeus to keep from adding noise to the experiment. <sighs> not that Okabe's talked to me a lot lately, though. Are you two me maybe meeting without telling me? You were together two days ago, after all. I told you, it's not like that! But you get these delusions that everything in the world is about romance. It's not a delusion. It's a highly accurate hypothesis based off a calm, dispassionate observation and analysis. <sighs> if you like that stuff that much, maybe you should have majored in... Maybe you should have... If you like that stuff that much, maybe you should have majored in it. Though given how totally wrong you are, you probably wouldn't have graduated, let alone get your doctorate. Dr. Luskinen brought his hands together in, the, in an exaggerated motion. It feels like it's been so long since I've seen this. 
used to be, I could always find you wherever you were on campus. It's like I can always hear you yelling at each other. <laughs> Come on, Professor. Stop joking around. It just means that you're very close. You two are like sisters. Now, let's get this meeting started. We need to talk about our future plans. The person who uses their time most efficiently wins. That's another one of my great quotes. I want some music. Kurosu, can you play something for me? Sure. A soft piano melody began to play from the laptop speakers. This? Uh -huh. Do you remember? It's the song that brought us together. She'd never forget. It was what had brought them together a year ago. And it was the symbol of their relationship. A year ago, in September 2009, Kurosu had officially joined the Brain Science Institute. She completed the graduate school's doctorate program in May of that year, and had only just turned 17 in July. Maho herself had joined the Brain Science Institute at an extremely young age, but her record had been beaten quite a lot. Kurosu was a genius. Everyone who met her could tell. Dr. Leskinen had been Kurosu's advisor during the program, so Maho had met her several times. And that was enough to tell her that Kurosu was different. Kurosu never showed off her own talents. Actually, she didn't seem to think of herself as particularly intelligent at all. But actually, that actually made it a little hard for the people around her to approach her. Whenever you talked to Kurosu, you were forced to realize that there was a gap between you and her that could never be erased. She'd learned later from Dr. Leskinen that things had been the same in grad school. It was a rumor that the real reason she'd come to America from Japan at the age of 11. No matter what she wanted, no matter where she lived, she was cut off from the people around her. And was what it was meant to be a genius like her. Since Maho was a girl too, and close to her in age, she actually considered Kurosu more of a rival. Since they were working in the same field, they were going to be compared, and she didn't want to lose. Maybe that was why Maho never thought of going to talk to her. And Kurosu was so busy learning how to work at the lab that she'd never come to, Ma to talk to Maho. But then two weeks after Kurosu came to the lab, a certain classical song had changed their relationship forever. And play. There were two types of people in this world. Those who worked better with music, and those who worked better with silence. From a brain science perspective, the idea that you could concentrate better with music was sheer nonsense. Whether you were aware of it or not, the sound that was vibrating your eardrums and your brain was continually analyzing it. But if there was, if there was ever a public debate on the subject, Maho would take the first position. Theory and feelings were different. You could concentrate best with music in the background, and you could be more creative. But there was one condition. The song has to have been composed by Mozart. Maho whispered to herself as she turned toward the computer. She'd been running a patch on some equations for two full days, and it finally completed. Today, she was going to, output, she was going to spend the whole day analyzing the output. It was Saturday, so she was the only person in the lab. This was the one day she had this whole huge space to herself. So she decided to play Mozart's 11th Sonata from the speakers, not her headphones. She didn't intend to pay any attention to the music. This was more like a ritual. A ritual she needed in order to, in order to concentrate. It was a warm-up exercise before she could d d dive into the sea of numbers and equations. 
When she dove in, she wouldn't need it anymore, so she'd simply stopped hearing it. She stopped seeing everything around her, too. What she saw were the numbers and equations. All that was in her head were numbers and equations. All that was left was a thinking machine named Maho Hyojo. Her mind left the bonds of her physical body, and the speed of her thoughts accelerated toward the infinite. It was time for another fun journey. Good morning. <laughs> oh, think I could recreate that scream, and it wouldn't be as good if I tried. Someone suddenly whispered in her ear, and Maho jumped out of her chair, lost her balance, and fell. She looked up and saw Kurisu staring down at her, be beginning to panic. I'm sorry. I didn't think you'd be so surprised. Kurisu! Don't scare me like that! I called your name a bunch of times, but you didn't seem to hear me. Uh, oh. Mo stood up and sat back down in her chair. Sorry. I was focusing so much I didn't hear you. Yeah, I thought so. You should have just left me alone. Maybe Kurosu could tell she was thinking that, but she quickly added, I felt bad about it, but since I've been through a weekend, I thought I should at least say something. And you seem like you just started, so I didn't think I'd be a bother. Did you just get here? Yeah. I thought I'd be the only one here. I'm surprised. And Maho realized something was strange. You said you just got here, right? So how'd you know I only just started working? Oh, because... Kurosu pointed to the speakers. You're still at the start of the first movement. K331, Mozart Piano Snotka in number 11 in a major. In A major, first movement. <laughs> I can't believe I read that in A major. I'm a musician. <laughs> in my defense, I'm a drummer. I don't need to know theory. You like Mozart? I just, I just know a little about him. Uh, it's really more that I just like this song. The Turkish March is more popular, but... The melody in the first movement feels so much more pleasant, doesn't it? I agree. I'm so glad. Whenever I'm trying to focus, I put Mozart on in the background. It's not a very scientific thing to do, I know. <laughs> Maho couldn't help but laugh as she realized Kurosu was the sa saying the same thing she'd said earlier. In the two weeks since Kurosu had joined the team, Maho hadn't been quite sure how to deal with her. But now she wanted to know a little more. So she used, to sig she used the signal her co-workers always used when they wanted to take breaks. Wanna get some coffee? Sounds great. There's a bunch of stuff I wanted to ask you. As she watched Kurosu follow her, filled with energy, she was reminded of a, of a pet dog she used to have. But later she would realize that that was one of the things that made Kurosu cute. She got two hot coffees from the lab coffee machine. And the two of them talked about the research for a while. It must have been a strange sight. 20-year-old Maho and 17-year-old Kurosu debating the latest developments in cerebral ph physiology while drinking coffee out of coffee. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> it's late for me, okay? Drinking coffee out of paper cups. But the two of them realized that since they've never had some... But the two of them realized that since they'd never had someone of the same sex and age to work with, these conversations were a big help to both of them. 
Having the old Amaho around must have been particularly a big help to Kurusu. Once in a while, Kurusu would call her sen Senpai, the Japanese word for an upperclassman or more senior colleague. You know, I once heard that Einstein liked to play the violin. He seemed to have a lot of respect for Mozart. Maybe it's a tradition, tradition for scientists to like Mozart. If that's true, then it's an honor. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, <laughs> this image. This image holds too many positive reactions. <laughs> Even if I can tell Maho probably looks fucking sleep deprived to all hell on the other side. After a short debate about the work, the two of them talked about Mozart until they finished their coffee. After she had a real conversation with Kurusu, Maho realized that she was a totally different than her first impression. Every time she spoke, she'd smile or pout. It was adorable to watch. But the only thing she had in common with most people was her age and her appearance. She was a genius. Do you know what Einstein said when someone asked him what death meant to him? No? Well, what did he say? Death means not getting to listen to Mozart anymore. It's a very famous phrase in Japan. Death means not getting to listen to Mozart anymore. It was a more romantic phrase than she'd expect from the Einstein she thought she knew. Huh. I had no idea. Einstein said that, huh? No, he didn't. Huh? Well, to be completely accurate, we can't prove that he didn't say it. But, there are, but at least there are no records of it. What do you mean? Kurosu smiled and put her finger up to her lips. A book that was published in Japan a long time ago had a phrase as, but that phrase is a quote from another biography. But the Japanese book didn't specify which biography they got the quote from, and so no one ever found it. So the author made it up? Sheesh. We can't prove that, so we can't be totally sure. But... I think these words very much. I think these words are very much what a logical man like Einstein would say. Logical? Yes. Because once you're dead, you can't listen to Mozart, right? Of course not! Yes. Of course not. Once you're dead, you can't listen to anything at all. Not just Mozart. Thus, the statement is true. See? Logical, right? You're very interesting, you know that? Intelligent and childish all, wrapped, childish, all wrapped up in the same brain. I'm not childish. Sorry. I know it's a bit late, but it's my pleasure to be working with you, Kurosu. Maho offered her hand, and Kurosu shook it with a gentle smile. Kurosu's hand was warm. You too, Maho. Mozart had brought the two of them together. Kurosu was a child beloved by God. Everyone was amazed and astonished by her unmatched creativity. Everyone including, of course, Maho. Something. I felt like she had to remember something important. Good morning. Someone suddenly whispered in her ear and Maho jumped off the sofa. What? <laughs> ah, Karazu was right. At some point, Dr. Leskin had picked up the laptop and taken, taken it behind Maho's back. Kurosu was on the screen laughing at her. 
Evidently, the professor bought it close to Ma Jose's ears and made Corso whisper to her. You were just in your concentration mode, weren't you? No matter how many times the professor, professor called your name, you wouldn't come out of your little world. Oh. Sorry. I'm impressed that you can continue your research even while this emergency is going on. The professor put the laptop back on the table and sat on the sofa across from her. And then they started the meeting. She discussed their future plans with the professor. One of the options that came up was going back to America. Something kept bugging Maho the whole time during the meeting. When she was remembering how she met Kurosu, she's also remembering something else. Salieri. Maho's username. She picked it the month after Kurosu had died. For some reason, she couldn't stop thinking about it. And after she finished her meeting with Dr. Leskin and then left the school, she realized it had started to rain. Huh. So it did rain. Japan's weather report is surprisingly accurate. I wonder if Kiryu stopped somewhere in the stopped in their shop somewhere. So she went to take out her phone and send a message to her. She got a message of, from her own of her own from Kurosu. It was fun talking with Sawayama today. Tell me about Okabe next time. I had fun too. But I've said this before, it's not like that. <laughs> She's about to snap and say something bad when she saw Moeko in her field of vision. She'd opened her folding umbrella and was crouching by the side of the road with her phone out. When Maho approached, she saw a flower blooming between the asphalt and the shrubbery. Mo Moeko was trying to take a picture of it. Sorry, Kiryu. I'm done. Moeka looked up and opened her mouth hesitantly. Maho was happy that she'd said her name. You were taking pictures of the flowers? Yeah. Moeka nodded and looked back toward the ground. There was a tiny flower blooming where the asphalt met the shrubbery. There was no other flower like it in view. The wind must have brought it here. The flower's colour was striking, but something, perhaps the rain, made it look sickly. Moeka took a picture of it. And then another, and another. The umbrella in her hand seemed to be stopping her from taking a good picture. Want me to hold your umbrella? No. I'm fine. It's fine, it's fine. Maho practically yanked the umbrella out of Moeka's hands. Thank you. You're welcome. Moik used both hands to steady her camera, and then when it came into focus, she pressed the button. A moment later, she stood up, satisfied. Got a good photo. I'm all set. Are you getting ready for my portrait? Moeka shook her head. I can't take your picture. It's raining. I always take pictures of landscapes. 
You like taking photos? Moeka shook her head again. It's proof. Where I was today. Proof? Yeah. What do you mean? And then she heard a sound that meant she'd received a Rhine message. Is that from Kurosu again? I got one too. It's from Faris. From Faris? Disaster, Nya! The 314th prophecy of Fatima has come to pass, Nya! The hearts of men have lost the will to believe! And the seal created by the sacrifice of an ancient Incan civilization is broken, Nya! Plus, it's only a matter of time before the god, dark god, the master of Pluto, re revives, Nya! Not on the earth, but the whole galactic federation is in danger, Nya! Summon the House of Lords and the Senate immediately, Nya! The president is missing, but I'm sure he's flown off in Air Force One for or something to fly hot to fight the enemy himself, Nya! I'll steal this. I'll start the ceremony to seal him away once more, Nya! I'll wait. I want. I want you to buy time for me until it finishes, Nya. Wait. What are you talking about? That, that was a joke, Nya. Jesus Christ, girls! Please. But really, there's big trouble, Nya. What happened? I'll explain later, Nya. There's a critical mission I want you to do before you head back to the condo, Nya. Both Maho and Moeka looked at each other, confused by Faris' strange message. Well, I don't know what the hell's about to happen, so I'm gonna leave this episode of Steins Gate Zero here. Because, honestly, it's a good point and I don't feel like doing any more Faris voice tonight. Also, I need to sleep. There is that aspect. So anyway, Thank you all for watching this episode of Steins Gate Zero. If you like the video in any capacity, please feel free to give the video a like down below. Leave a comment on whatever you feel like at this point. And if you want to keep up to date with whenever I post videos, be they of this, the stream highlights for Persona 5 The Royal, or my Pikmin speed runs, which uh, I have done one. It's coming. The VOD will be up shortly, hopefully, throughout the coming week. In fact, it'll probably be up before this, knowing me. Yeah, if you want to keep up to date with whenever I do any of those things, please consider subscribing to the channel. In theory, YouTube sends you alerts to when I post videos if you do that, but you have to press the bell button as well. So really, all the pressing the subscribe button does is you make me feel good about myself. So, thanks in advance. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Nyx, and I'll see you guys next time. Laters!